With Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah performing well at the Japanese box office, Toho looked to capitalize on its success, and was originally planning to bring Ghidorah back in a direct sequel. However, upon discovering that Mothra was more popular, particularly with women, it was decided to dust off a previously shelved Mothra script and rewrite it as a Godzilla movie. And so a year later, Mothra returned to the big screen for the first time in 25 years, new and upgraded, ready to face Godzilla once again in Godzilla vs. Mothra. A massive meteorite crashes and awakens a sleeping Godzilla, which uncovers a mysterious large object on the unexplored infant island. A small expedition is sent to the island to investigate, and there they discover the cosmos. Two twin miniature girls who reveal that the egg is Mothra, who will hatch soon to do battle with her counterpart, the Black Moth Batra. As Mothra and Batra fight for the fate of Earth and humanity, Godzilla enters the fray, who proves powerful enough that the two might have no choice but to work together to defeat him. Godzilla vs. Mothra sees the Heisei series shifting further away from the moral and political complexity of the earlier entries. The fantasy elements are embraced even further, and there is a greater effort to make the film more family-friendly with the inclusion of slapstick comedy and family drama. This is, of course, appropriate given that this same style was used in the original Mothra, and in fact there are many story elements taken from the original Mothra vs. Godzilla, making this a loose remake in many ways. The results are kind of a mixed bag, where Godzilla feels like an after thought in his own movie. While directed by newcomer to the franchise Tako Akamura, it is once again written by Kazuki Amori, who pumps the story up with a pro-environmentalism message. This is not surprising, as environmental themes have always been inherent to the Godzilla franchise, but here it is particularly heavy-handed, lacking the sort of nuance that had made the earlier Heisei films so strong. Instead of letting the action and the plot support the thematic undercurrents, they are stated outright, making the film feel preachy, which sucks much of the drama out of what is actually a very interesting story that works better on a conceptual level than an execution. The characters reflect this, with most of them being mouthpieces meant to spout the film's obvious themes. The two best characters are the two leads, Takuya and Masako, divorcees forced to explore Infant Island together. The actors Tetsuya Beso and Satomi Kobayashi have good chemistry, and watching their relationship develop from antagonistic to reconciliation is one of the film's highlights. Megumi Odaka is back again as Miki Sagusa, but here she is given nothing to do but stand around and watch as the movie plays out on screen with all the other characters. Akira Takarada makes a welcomed return, though he is also given little to do. Though not twins, Keiko Imamura and Sayaka Osawa do an admirable job replacing the original Yumi and Emi Ito as Mothra's twin fairies. They have lovely voices, and their modern renditions of the classic Mothra songs are memorable in their own right. Godzilla vs. Mothra does have some quality monster action that makes up for its narrative shortcomings. The inclusion of Batra as a sort of dark twin to Mothra is a really inspired addition to the mythology, and the conflict between the two is the film's most compelling element, even if it feels like it could have been fleshed out more. Mothra herself is upgraded to better handle the new more powerful Godzilla, though her execution, while not bad, is a step down from the more natural insect-like movements of the original. Godzilla himself is brought to life with the same degree of believability as the last film, and while he does kind of feel like a third wheel in this film, his role as a wild card antagonist is actually quite enjoyable. The final three-way battle between Godzilla, Mothra, and Batra is decent, but suffers from the stiffness and over-reliance on beam attacks that would go on to define the Heisei era. Godzilla vs. Mothra benefits from solid direction and a fast pace that never leaves you bored. The film is clearly influenced by Western cinema, particularly Indiana Jones, which isn't exactly original, but does give the first act an adventurous tone that is appropriate to the material. It is also enhanced by another fantastic score by Akira Ifukube, who once again brings back classic themes while also introducing new ones. His theme for Batra in particular is a standout, a hard and threatening contrast to Mothra's soft, ethereal theme. It's really hard hard not to get sucked into the drama when it's accompanied by such beautiful music.
Godzilla vs. Mothra is a clear step down in quality to the previous films in the Heisei era. It lacks their technical and narrative sophistication, instead relying on heavy-handed environmental messages and broadly sketched one-dimensional characters to appeal to a broader audience. It's undoubtedly a more commercial film, and it benefited from this, becoming the highest-grossing Godzilla movie since 1962. It's a solid film with some interesting ideas, cool monsters, and another amazing score by Akira F. Fukube. It may not be the greatest of the Heisei series, but it's still a decent addition to the franchise that brought some new ideas to one of Godzilla's most classic of enemies. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.